which is indeed divisible by five. In step two, I make the assumption, so we substitute k plus one into this. What I wanna teach you now is induction with divisibility with questions that has multiple index. And what I mean by that is how we have, for example, two to the power of three n rather than just n. So we have two to the power of three n or four n, etc. So we're just gonna learn how that affects the question. So in question two, we wanna prove that four to the power of two n minus one is always divisible by five. Firstly, in step one, we show it's true for n equals to one. So how do we know it's n equals to one, not n equals to zero? Because if we substitute in n equals to zero, you have four to the power of zero, which is just one. One minus one is zero, which is not divisible by five. So you know it's only true for when n equals to one and not n equals to zero. So substituting in one, I have four to the power of two, which is 16 minus one, which is 15, which is indeed divisible by five. So therefore this is true for n equals to one. So I've proven the first starting point. In step two, I make the assumption that this is true for n equals to k. So remember that's when we write that is four to the power of two k minus one is divisible by five. And now we change that into an equation. So we say that four to the power two k minus one equals to five m, where m is an integer. Because by multiplying by five, we're guaranteeing it can be divisible by five. Now we can move on to step three which is to show that it's true for n equals to k plus one. So we substitute k plus one into this, four to the power of two times bracket k plus one, and that's why we get four to the power of two k plus two minus one is divisible by five. So remember we start off with this because there's no left-hand side to start off with. And what we need to do is manipulate it to be able to factorize five at the front. And the first thing we do with this is we always wanna separate this index. If there's a plus there, we wanna separate it. So we separate that into four to the power of two K times four to the power of two, right? Because if it's plus, then when I separate them, it becomes multiplied between the bases, minus one. Now we look back into the assumption that we made in step two, that four to the power of two K minus one equals to five M. So therefore by subtracting five M minus one, we can say that four to the power of two K equals to five M plus one, because we've added that one onto this side. So now I substitute this into here. So I have five M plus one times four squared, which is 16 minus one. Now I don't want you to go, oh, that's four to the power of two K minus one and substitute that whole thing for five M because can you see how there's a multiplied there? So we can't just use that, right? And that's why I'm actually changing this to substitute five M plus one into there. And now I just need to expand. So 16 times five just gives me 80 M plus 16 minus one equals to 80 M plus 15. And I can factorize out five, which leaves me with 16 M plus three. Now remember how I said, I wanna check if this is an integer. Well, there's no fraction or decimals there. So I can assume, yes, that is an integer. This is divisible by five. So therefore this must be true for N equals to K plus one. Now in our conclusion, we would write, therefore, four to the power of two n minus one is always divisible by five, but four n is greater or equal to one. So remember how we worked at the start, it didn't work for n equals to zero, it only worked for n equals to one, and then this shows us any number greater than that. So you can see here that when we have a multiple index, all that happens is that when you multiply it by k plus one, you just have to make sure that you multiply the whole thing, the whole k plus one by the coefficient in front. So just be careful to do that.